the gravity of the time is such that every new avenue of peace, no matter how dimly discernible, should be explored. Never before in history has so much hope for so many people been gathered together in a single organization. You will provide a great share of the wisdom, of the courage, and the faith which can bring to this world lasting peace for all nations and happiness and well-being for all men. So we are here today with Sylvie Berman, the president of the World Nuclear Exhibition. Sylvie, welcome to Titans of Nuclear. Thank you. So we're going to talk about the World Nuclear Exhibition and this wonderful event and everything that entails in just a moment. But first, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sort of what is your background and how did you end up at a nuclear <laughs> exhibition? Well, you know, I'm a diplomat and uh, I was ambassador to uh, China, to the UK and uh, also to Russia. And of course, there are nuclear countries and uh, we have a close partnership with all, all these countries. I was there in China when uh, uh, there was uh, Taishan and uh, uh, with the participation of, not, not participation, but uh, uh, the intervention of EDF, but not only EDF, but that was interesting is that there was also uh, 100 uh, small and medium companies and the people you can see here in the WAE and so it helped them and uh, even in France and uh, to, to find new uh, partnerships so I think it's important it's uh, of course uh, an industry of uh, excellence uh, in France and I was proud of this uh, um, of, of this industry when I was in the UK it was uh, uh, during the negotiations for Inkley Point and so I was there during the, the signature and that was an important event and also well in Russia we have a, co a cooperation and I was lucky enough to visit uh, the, uh, uh, the first SMR in the world in fact uh, which is Académique Le Modosov in Murmansk and so that was very interesting so I'm interested by nuclear I think also it's, uh, of course, uh, energetic independence, but it's also geopolitical independence mm -hmm. of the country. Yeah, what initially interested you about the Foreign Service and sort of working in that global space? But that's what you mentioned precisely, is global space. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I wanted to, uh, to know something else. I was uh, first interested by uh, Asia by China and Japan and uh, so I started to learn these languages and then I went to China as a young student and uh, well it's more than 40 years ago now of course China was a very different country and then when I decided I studied also history and political sciences and uh, when I uh, decided to uh, learn Chinese and Japanese I looked at the booklet of uh, the uh, uh, Institute of um, Oriental Languages and uh, it was written that it was possible with that to be a diplomat and so I thought yes that's a good thing and so uh, that's the reason why I decided to join the uh, Foreign Service and I think it's a fantastic job because well I, I know some languages and I've discovered some, uh, some new worlds also. <laughs> That's incredible, and it's such an honor to have you here with us today. So, uh, what exactly is the World Nuclear Exhibition? It's uh, the biggest uh, nuclear exhibition in the world, and so it reflects uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, very uh, important industry uh, in France. It's like the, what we're doing in aeronautics in the Bourget, so it's an ambition to have a bigger and bigger WNE, and this one, uh, and uh, despite the uh, sanitary crisis, is bigger than uh, 
last one in, uh, in a certain way. There has uh, a lot of people coming, more than 600 uh, uh, exponents. Uh, I don't know if it's the right <laughs> word or not. And uh, also, uh, well, 18,000 visitors, and only because of uh, the new uh, virus Omicron, some people from South Africa couldn't come and also uh, unfortunately some people from the UK because of uh, the new quarantine, quarantine uh, rule when they, when they come back. But apart from that, we have 35% of foreign uh, uh, people and uh, we have a lot of, uh, I don't know if you saw some, some of them, some uh, some panels, uh, world workshops, tribunes, and uh, on everything. I mean, hydrogen, mm -hmm. uh, waste management, and SMR. So uh, there's lots of events uh, going on here. Yeah, it really is such an impressive feat, especially in the wake of you know a global pandemic that you guys were able to put this on and so successfully and so safely. Um, so, and, and the panels have been so great. We're actually, I'm really lucky my colleague is moderating the hydrogen panel right now. And oh, she yes. was so honored to be invited. Um, so GFEN is the organization that puts on this event. Can you tell us a little bit about who they are and, and the role that they play in WNE? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, well, it's uh, all the industrials that are uh, working in the nuclear field but not only big companies, of course SMEs as well, and also some uh, companies uh, uh, with only maybe 20% of their activities in uh, nuclear, but it's really, uh, well, something which is uh, strong, which uh, uh, and could be uh, very influential. So uh, before it wasn't called like this, and it was not as big as it is now, but uh, they decided to uh, create uh, uh, WNE and uh, with the idea of uh, well having of, uh, of course the opportunity to sign contracts but also to have some uh, discussions uh, about uh, innovation and everything and so uh, they organized this uh, uh, well this sector of, uh, of activity and so they own the, um, the WNE and uh, you saw they, 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 they have a uh, pavilion here and uh, they're very active yeah. and it's growing. Yeah, no, it's, it's really amazing and it's, it's really incredible how you're able to incorporate large, large companies, you know, EDF, Framatome, Westinghouse, and you know, these smaller startups and we're looking right out here on this, it's called the Startup Planet where you know, startups are able to be featured and, and we were speaking to some folks earlier today who said that that's where they got their start, you know, and now they're, they're an SMR developer and, and they have a full, full size booth and that growth and sort of the, their ability to come back year after year is just so incredible and, and wonderful to be able to see that progression. Yeah, absolutely. And that's very uh, important for, for them, uh, this opportunity for uh, uh, startups. And also what is interesting is that some uh, students will, will come tomorrow, I understand. It's more than 100 students, wow. and it shows that it's a, uh, it's an industry for the future. Yes. And because there's been new announcements uh, um, concerning uh, well, uh, the, the uh, creation of new uh, power plants, new EPRs, of course, mm -hmm. and also all this uh, research and development about the SMRs. And, there's a lot of uh, countries, people who are enthusiastic about it, and so young people are really uh, uh, dedicated to, uh, to that. So I think it's a real, uh, really a good sign. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. And, and, and thinking about the future, you guys are hosting a panel tomorrow on uh, small modular reactors and advanced reactors, uh, which seems really exciting and, and really is future facing. Yes, it's uh, really exciting and uh, well, the Americans uh, wanted to come here because of uh, those uh, SMRs and other countries are interesting and, uh, interested, sorry, and uh, uh, I think uh, with big power plants, uh, there, there was maybe sometimes some reluctance or, or, or for some countries it, it was not necessary. But with this new opportunity, there's a great interest and uh, including for um, countries, well, for uh, developing countries. And I think that's uh, 
really good opportunities. Yeah, it's it's amazing how global of an event this is. You know, uh, we've seen uh, booths from the United Kingdom, Slovenia, Argentina, China, Russia, Germany, the United States. It's amazing how many people come from all over the world to really uh, participate in these conversations. What kind of conversations are typically being had at these booths? You mentioned business deals. Um, I imagine there's a lot of like introductions being made um, and especially having been so long since we could all be face to face, it seems like this is such a great time for people to uh, to begin those conversations again. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great time for them. And uh, so again, uh, it's a lot of uh, opportunities, but also all those discussions and, and panels are interesting, uh, interesting for everyone. You know that uh, well, the, uh, the, 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 there has been an evolution uh, to, on this uh, perception of a nuclear issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, people start to uh, realize that uh, uh, the most pressing issue is uh, to address climate change and it is absolutely impossible without uh, nuclear energy. It has been said by uh, all this uh, specialized uh, organization, IAEA, uh, IEA, and uh, also we had uh, the uh, Director General, uh, yes. Raphael Grossi, and then afterwards uh, Fatih Birol. Yeah. We had for the first time uh, EU Commissioner for Energy, uh, video for, uh, from uh, EU Commissioner for uh, Internal uh, Market, and they were all positive about it. And of course, our Minister of Economy, and uh, and he, well, our president has already announced that uh, there would be uh, a new program without telling yet how many yes. uh, plants, but it's uh, obvious now. And I think it reflects this evolution of public opinion. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that everybody is in favor of nuclear energy, but they start to realize that without uh, this energy, which is really low carbon, it will uh, it would be impossible to have uh, uh, decarbonated uh, economy so i think yes. that's the reason why and it was said also during the COP 26 and it's not well we don't have to oppose the uh, renewable and uh, nuclear energy of course it's complementary but it's uh, not uh, intermittent uh, mm -hmm. like uh, renewable so right, that's an yeah. advantage of this yeah. uh, energy and how wonderful to have the event in a country where there's so much nuclear energy and you know the whole event is almost able to be powered by clean nuclear energy like that's just so so great so um last night you guys presented a number of awards and i yes. know you presented an award to a another former titan kirsty gogan the first wne fellow award uh what is that award and, and uh you know uh, tell us a little bit about that yeah, it's a new uh, initiative and I think that's very important and the idea is not only to give an award to uh, nuclear engineers but also to a personality who was not necessarily in favor of uh, nuclear energy before but she discovered the advantage and she now, well, if Kirsty uh, uh, Kogan, also, uh, of course, she's promoting uh, nuclear energy and that's the idea to give an award to someone who is not uh, uh, an, an just, advocate, uh, yes. yeah, an advocate. Yes, and exactly. uh, I think it was a beautiful ceremony. That's wonderful. And, and you gave a number of awards out to uh, companies as well, right? For, for different uh, achievements they've, they've gained. Yeah, earlier. absolutely. In research and uh, development. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, uh, for big companies, but also for SMEs and uh, it encourages them to, uh, to continue. So yeah. uh, that, that is quite good. It's wonderful. It's so wonderful that you're able to recognize both in, in that ceremony and, and really uh, you know, give, give that uh, recognition. Tell us a little bit about, I mean, obviously this is such a huge, huge event and you did have to postpone a year. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the pandemic, what you guys have done to uh, sort of address those concerns and, and how you were able to sort of shift parts of the event to live stream even so that folks who maybe weren't able to attend in person could still could still watch. 
Yeah, absolutely. Of course, it, it was very important to have a very safe uh, event. So we uh, took a lot of, uh, of decisions and people, as you see, they're all wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, well, they are supposed to uh, do a PCR or antigenic test, mm -hmm. uh, having sanitary passes for those who are from uh, the uh, European Union. And also because we knew that some wouldn't be able to come, so that's the reason why it's kind of hybrid event. Mm -hmm. I think it's better when people are here in person yes. and they like to talk to each other and to interact. But there, there is this possibility for those who uh, couldn't come. Yeah, no, I, it's so wonderful, and I know you know, uh, even some of our team who wanted to watch the panel that our team member was, was moderating, they were so grateful to be able to have that opportunity and for folks exactly who, especially with this new variant, were able to attend, I'm sure they really appreciated that ability to, to log in and, and to watch. Um, you know, looking ahead, where, where do you see the conference going? How, how do you, um, you just see it continuing to grow, especially as nuclear continues to sort of grow within the public sphere and public conversation around climate change? Yes, absolutely. So it, organ it is organized every two years. Mm -hmm. So we are planning to organize one uh, next year. Mm -hmm. I will announce tomorrow at the closing ceremony uh, uh, the exact dates. And uh, so we hope to have even more companies. And uh, I, I saw in the afternoon uh, a foreign company who said that it is the first time but they want to come back next year and have a bigger <laughs> booth. So that's uh, very encouraging. That's uh, and that's good news. And I'm sure others will uh, will come back as well because well they they saw uh, that it is uh, very uh, very p positive for them. Yeah, no, it is just such a such a wonderful event. Well, to kind of wrap up here, looking ahead, you know, where do you see the future of nuclear energy? in France, globally, uh, and, and just kind of in general? Well, I think uh, in France, of course, it will uh, remain a key energy and with a new program, as I uh, said, and uh, which is also very important to, to keep the expertise. And, uh, uh, but we are cooperating with uh, other countries and uh, I think in other countries also, there could be new decisions. You know that there are some projects uh, in India and in the uh, uh, Czech Republic, in Poland, and uh, so uh, the new EPR in, uh, in Finland uh, will uh, start uh, sometimes next year. So I think it is very important and the interest shown by the public also for nuclear uh, show that, uh, shows that well, it will continue and of course it's key for a decarbonated uh, economy alongside of course with uh, renewable but it, 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 it can't be replaced by a renewable and so it's uh, still a long term uh, energy. Sylvie Berman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And initiate at least a new approach to the many difficult problems that must be solved in both private and public conversations. If the world is to shake off the inertia imposed by fear and is to make positive progress toward peace.